Multi-layered chromatography, also known as TLC, is a common analytical technique used in chemistry. It can be used to determine the purity of a sample, analyze the components of a mixture, or monitor reactions and purifications. To start, we take a clean TLC plate. And very carefully, we're going to draw a line on the bottom of the plate with a pencil. followed by a little tick to know where to spot our compounds. Let's take a look at the TLC plate on a molecular level. As you can see, the TLC plate is coated with a thin layer of a polar absorbent, such as silica, shown as dancers in white. The black armband represents the silica's polar hydrogen bonding abilities. Now we use a TLC spotter to transfer our desired sample onto the plate. The capillary action draws our sample into the TLC spotter. We lightly tap the spotter onto the plate to make the smallest spot possible. If your sample is concentrated, one spot will be sufficient. Let's take a look at how our sample interacts with the silica on the TLC plate. Apparently, our samples contain one polar compound wearing the black armband and one nonpolar compound without an armband. The nonpolar compound doesn't really interact with the silica gel. On the other hand, the polar compound is able to hydrogen bond with the TLC plate and stick quite well. After the sample has dried on the TLC plate, we place it into the TLC developing jar, being careful not to have the solvent line in the jar go higher than the line drawn on the plate. In this developing jar, we have hexanes, a nonpolar solvent. Let's take a look at how our sample moves with the nonpolar solvent. As the solvent runs up the plate, it will be able to move the nonpolar compound along with it because the nonpolar compound only weakly interacts with the silicon gel. The polar compound, however, doesn't move because the nonpolar solvent isn't strong enough to detach the polar compound from the silica that it interacts so well with. Always keep track of the progress of the TLC plate to make sure that the solvent doesn't run off the plate. We must remove the TLC plate from the jar before it wets the whole plate and carefully mark the solvent front with a pencil. Not all compounds on the plate will be visible by the naked eye, but we can visualize them if we put the TLC plate under a UV light. As you can see, the nonpolar compound is higher up on the plate with a larger RF. The polar compound is on the baseline where it was originally spotted. If we rerun the TLC experiment, using a polar solvent like ethyl acetate instead of a nonpolar solvent like hexanes, let's see what happens. Both compounds start at baseline, but this time as the polar solvent runs up the TLC plate, both compounds move up the plate. Now the increased polarity of the solvent allows it to detach the polar compound from the plate and move it a small distance before the compound reattaches to the silica gel. As you can see on the plate, when using nonpolar hexanes as a solvent, both compounds have a smaller RF compared to when we use polar ethyl acetate as a solvent. A common misunderstanding of thin layered chromatography is that nonpolar solvents will move nonpolar compounds further than a polar solvent because nonpolar likes nonpolar. This is not true. A nonpolar compound will always interact more weakly with the TLC plate than a polar compound, regardless of the solvent. A nonpolar solvent will be able to slightly move the nonpolar compound up the plate, but a polar solvent will be able to break the weak interactions the nonpolar compound has with the TLC plate and move it further up the plate as shown here.